Okay, so that will be a quick one. I just like have some time spare, so I just wanted to make sure that I keep um, in touch with this code base a little more often than uh, in the past, uh, just so I don't forget what I'm doing. And then um, we were, uh, what were we? Where we? We were with the tokenizing stuff. We were with the, is this, why is it not working? Oh, there you go. So we were basically with these, the channel breeze, blah, blah, blah. So we have this one dictionary. And the next thing we need to do is I wanted to see if I, we could just then recover the, um, uh, so there's two questions, right? So there's two questions to address. One question is, can we, um, so how do we do the, 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 the position, positional encoding? That's one question. Another question is how do we um, shape this whole thing into matrices so that we actually can do uh, can do the work, right? So in, in this example here, next world prediction example, we had the positional encoding, uh, multi attention, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, this is completely not, not clear at all. Loss function, uh, defining the training loop. Uh, train step, blah, 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 epochs, whatever. Like that's definitely not something um, that I know. Uh, so in here we have roughly the architecture. So input embedding, output embedding. The whole thing with the embeddings is still, uh, was still unclear. Positional encoding and then I think the positional encoding is just a separate thing, right? But then how it gets into the attention mechanism is how do we turn that into matrices? So we can do two things. So we can explore the, these and let's explore the positional encoding at least get it to get it to work because that should be easy. Uh, what we had before is we have the um, attention uh, file, which is basically the wrong thing to do. I think the positional encoding is something that I can just, um, I think I can just do here, tokenized, and not just like a spot of a library or whatever. So, um, uh, not a library, but like a separate module, because this is all is all kind of like encoding, right? So, tokenized. So let's do let's do um, positional encoding. So how do I do positional encoding and to the tokenized examples? Mr. Ghostwriter, how do I do? On data in, what is this, clipboard? No. My, my 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 point is if I look at if I look at uh, if I look at these, what is happening here is that we have so we're doing these, which I have no idea what is it doing actually. <laughs> Something with a sign, like because now we've now the challenge is that now we've got uh, now we've got basically a uh i have too many things open so what is ghostwriter saying in the right because essentially now we've got something that is isolated right so we've got dead channel breeze right as a that's like a pair but that's kind of like pretty much isolated so i don't know is position encoding something you do just on these i guess so right because this just or or you know so what does um ghostwriter uh it's cool that it tells you what it used. Interesting. So the performance of this position code on the data and token you can use a full like code snippet. Mm. Get the maximum sequence length. Initialize an empty tensor for positional encoding. Positional encoding is torch zero torch zeros. Iterate over each example. Iterate over each token in the sequence. Calculate the positional encoding. So it's using again the, the sinus here. Uh, positional encodings. And what is IJK? So it's just... 
because I mean essentially that is maybe what's turning this into a matrix right uh, I'll buy this a small one because it's, we're, we're just doing we have a very small window I is basically widget sum it's right over each token so I is each sequence like each each pair right um, J is essentially each token What is embedding dimension though? So this code is the list of tokenized sequences. The first ca we first calculate the maximum sequence length. Then we initialize an empty tensor with dimensions, number of examples, max sequence length. That's the problem, is that we don't have a sequence. That's kind of the problem. Right? So what we have so what we have, which it doesn't seem like the end, so we, we have we have these. Right? I'm not so sure if that's the ideal format, but so the format in which we have data and tokenized tokenized examples is like this. So we have an array of tokens, an array of input tokens. sequentially sorted and then the output token um, ah, maybe I should just be that's what we actually have actually to be more precise, we have this. So, so each token is a D model length array that already has numerical info uh, about the characters on the token. So how do we how do we add positional info into this? You know what I mean? And then how do we treat yeah, how are we gonna treat that as a matrix for the uh, uh, that's the next step. Let's not let's not walk ourselves too much ahead of the current. So in the given code the input tokens are represented by series of integers. Wait, did you go response to this big word vocabulary? No. No. <sighs> Sinusoidal sinusoli positional coding. Create a positional coding matrix of shape. Which is max length B model. Filled with zeros. Then for each position in the sequence, it calculates the position of encoding values using a sine function for even indices and a cosine function for odd indices. Finally, the position encoding matrix is added element-wise to the input token sequences. This way, the position information is incorporated into the input tokens, providing the model with knowledge of the relative positions of the tokens okay. in the sequence. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, essentially, our sequences are of length three, right? Maybe that's what we should. Um, fix, I guess. Tokenized examples. So is it should have three, three elements. Uh, 
In the given code, the input tokens are represented by sequences of integers where each integer corresponds to a specific word in the vocabulary. That's not true. But maybe that's what we should be doing. Because, although I thought this might be easier to manipulate, right? Input tokens. No, I have, I have these encoding. I want to work with these encoding because I want to I want to work directly with word similarity with character similarity, right? Um, and I want to add positional information to these. model exactly so give me the code give me the code to create um, a positional uh, a positional recording matrix okay so let me the first one you to understand how these work so how how does so how does this work? So it's a technique. Okay, so it's a technique uh, is to incorporate position information to the input tokens in sequence to sequence models. It helps the model differentiate the relative positions of tokens in a sequence. The encoding works by assigning a unique fixed vector representation. So you have a unique fixed vector representation called position encoding to each position in a sequence. Okay. So it's position, right? So you, so so we're gonna have essentially that's what we have, right? So we have these things here. So this is this is a token, okay. And then what we want to do, let's put it here. So this is a token, and then what we want what, what we want to do is we it, we want to assign and that's kind of a position, right? So. So we're really gonna have like a three by three metric or a three math, at least our sequences are like like length three. So we want a unique fixed vector representation per each position. Um, the position encoding is added to the corresponding token embedding vector to create the final position. That, that, that should be just easy, right? In, in sinusoidal position encoding, the position encoding vectors are computed based on sine and cosine functions of different frequencies. The frequencies allow uh, the frequencies follow a particular pattern such that each dimension of the encoding captures information about the unique combination of position and frequency. The formula used to calculate the position encoding vector for a given position and dimension is the following. Okay, so given given a position and, and dimension. Okay, so dimension that would be, I guess that's D model, yeah. Okay, so this is the values at position, position, and dimension 2i, the, and the positional encoding vector. Again, I'm not so sure why that works. I can I think I understand that intuitively, but like, you know, we're just trying to create something that's unique for the for each position, and then that it's unique. And and here, right? yeah. So it's the sign of the position, but then it's divided by by these. And here's like, it's something that is proportional to. Can we plot these? Can you plot these? Okay, that's something to to do. Yeah, let let let, let me just. Uh, yeah, I think I, that's a good idea. Actually, let us just plot this. I'll do this in the next. Um, I just can't. I don't have time to do this now. But like, I just wanted to kind of plot that. See if, see see how that actually helps. Um, ah, I think it's got to. Okay, so I think it's probably using. I think it's probably using that that dimension as sort of a frequency 
It's giving it a unique frequency. I get it. I think it, I, th I think I understand that. It's giving, it, it's giving it a unique frequency that is defined by the position and the element in there, right? So essentially, kind of each dimension. Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of position and dimension follows that. Uh, This is going to be it. And how do we guarantee it's unique? Because uh, we need to, you know, the, the sine function and cosine function at the end of the day kind of end up just being uh, giving you repetitive values, right? So you want to see probably like in a, you know, one cycle of the of the sinus function. Um, yeah, but I guess okay, I guess that's the point. Yeah, I think I think I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like intuitively, essentially the sine function will give you a value between like minus one and one, I believe, right? So essentially what you're doing these is you're kind of have that form, like you have that form like that, and then, yeah. So so you're guaranteeing that it gives a unique value within this range of possible positions, because you know, you know, it's, you know, you have like a, a set of limited positions. It's like, it's a limited, you have like a length of a sequence. The sequence has got like your input size plus the output size, right? Yeah, so I think, no, I, I don't need to plot that. I understand. But I mean, it could be a good exercise anyway to do, but I think I understand why why that works. And then we're using sine and cosine, like cosine for the even, for the odd positions um, to bring some more variability to these, I guess. Why? So why use, different patterns okay yeah as that's why that's what I thought the ad adjacent positions have different encodings yeah and capture different information by using combination of so it's a way to, for even more positions to create different patterns of position encodings this is done to ensure that adjacent positions have different encodings and capture different information by using a combination of sine and functions. Okay, position encoding can encode both the relative and absolute positions of the words. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in a way, if you would just use one, I think you would kind of have, uh, you'd be missing sort of a more absolute component of it because you're 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 going to be if we just use sign for example the adjacent positions you're going to have like a bit of a gradient that is easy to predict right so you're going to have like a pattern that is telling you that it's, it's kind of like easier uh, well you're capturing less information i would say uh you're just capturing more of the relative thing right because you know the sign is kind of has this pattern i guess yeah but we could try to plot this next time, but I think that's the way it works. Okay, but we can implement that then next time. So, okay, cool. So it just, it would just be, but it's just to know why I, I, I need to have a matrix for, uh, for these. I, I don't, don't really think I need any matrix. It's just an array of of these. And then, yeah, okay, because you have your batch, right? Mm -hmm. But my batch is going to be one, so I don't really care. I think, I think I'll just do this by almost by hand, but just saying, um, I have the tr token as training example. So for each example, we do this thing with the positions and and off you go. So just example by example. Yeah. Cool. See you next time.